I think it goes without saying that everybody wants to have a better cruise vacation. So what if I gave you some easy ways to boost anybody's cruise today? I've got 10 tips to help you improve your cruise vacation. Here we go. Hey everyone, it's Matt from RollerCreamBlog.com, and there really isn't a formula or pattern that every single person can follow in order to have like an amazing cruise, right? When it comes to the tips and tricks that we share here on RollerCreamBlog.com, I feel like uh, hopefully some percentage of them will help you benefit your cruise and have a better cruise experience. But I thought about, well, shoot, what are some easy ways pretty much everybody could have a better cruise experience with some easy to follow tips? And it got me thinking, what are some of those ways? Because in my experience, everyone has their own style of cruising. Some people try to do every single thing they can on the ship before lunch. Others don't wake up until lunch, right? That's the beauty of a cruise. You get to do what you want when you want it. No matter how you prefer to chill, there are some easy ways to build on your cruise plans to make it an even better cruise experience. Now, think of these strategies like spices in a food recipe. You don't need to add them, but the extra flavor might be a nice touch. So again, this isn't to say that you need to add them or everybody should do them, but I really think it would make a way for most people to have a better experience overall. Number one is definitely add days before or after your cruise. I think everybody should fly to their cruise at least a day ahead of time, simply because of how flaky the airlines are with cancellations and delays. It's a tip that I've talked about quite a bit on this channel about a really good idea because this is about protecting your cruise vacation. After all, flying to your cruise the same day it begins is playing with fire, but coming in early or staying after your cruise allows you to pad your vacation time. If you arrive a day or two early for your cruise, you get to have a more relaxed ramp up to getting on board. You'll be able to explore the city your ship departs from, as well as adjust to a time zone change. Staying a few days after your cruise helps soften the blow of the post-cruise blues, as it were, and feel like your vacation isn't coming to a screeching halt. If you can work remotely, spending a couple extra days working from the beach in Florida is a really good compromise where you can get a change of scenery without having to spend extra vacation days. This strategy is especially helpful if you're on a short cruise, such as a weekend sailing, where you can take a quick cruise and then expand that overall vacation feel. Number two is to buy the key. Now, I've said many times on this YouTube channel, I'm not a huge fan of the value proposition the key offers. But I do admit buying the key is a simple means of hitting the easy button to cruising. If you're not familiar with the key, by the way, the key is an option that Realcreamian offers to pretty much anybody to buy into VIP treatments on board, such as early check time at the terminal, reserve time and signature activities, and a welcome aboard lunch. Now, this video isn't about how to maximize value. So if you're looking for ways to splurge without breaking the bank and improve your cruise overall, well, then the key does have a benefit for that. I'm sure it won't come as any surprise when I tell you that a massage is a good way to improve your cruise, but getting a sail away massage might be a really good way to improve your cruise as well. It's no secret that the massage at the Fatality Spa is going to be relaxing and enjoyable, but I think it's a great idea to get it on the first day right as the ship is departing. Embarkation day is a really busy day, and I've always found the first day to have that feeling of running errands rather than relaxing. You want to get dining reservations, unpack all your clothes, book shows, and a host of other important first day activities. By the time late afternoon rolls around, it's not unusual to start feeling like you're running out of energy a little bit. This is the perfect time to schedule a spa appointment. Usually, the price for a spa treatment on embarkation day is cheaper because everybody's busy doing those other things as well. Getting a massage right as your ship is departing could be the perfect way to bring things down a notch and get in that I'm on vacation mode a whole lot faster. Next up is to ask the waiter for an alternative menu option. Whether you have a food allergy or you're just a picky eater, there are other options that are not necessarily on the menu in the dining room. Ask to speak to the head waiter and explain what you like, even if it's not on the menu. Politely talk to your wait staff about what options you have. In general, as long as they have the ingredients and you make the request in advance, they can usually accommodate gr a great variety of requests. Be aware, though, that some changes do take extra time, so give the staff advance notice. Usually, 24 hours will suffice for most special meals or foods. Another really good way to improve your cruise might be to skip a shore excursion and stay on board. Now, you probably booked a cruise because of the fun ports that your ship is scheduled to visit, but you might consider staying on board the ship for one of those stops. That isn't to say, by the way, the ports of call your ship visits don't offer some really fun things to do. Rather, this is about a way to take advantage of a less busy ship. If there's a port you've been to before, or you just can't find a shore excursion that really jumps out as a great choice, then you might be better off staying on the ship and enjoying a far less busy pool deck. In the morning and afternoon, while a cruise ship is docked in port, the pool deck is far less busy than almost any other time of the cruise. This means it's really easy to get a seat by the pool, a seat in the hot tub, or your own personal space in the pool. 
Being on board when most others are off the ship is the closest feeling you're going to have to having the ship really all to yourself. If you got kids, staying on board not only allows them to enjoy the pool deck, but also get extra rides in on the ship's water slides without a massive weight. Something else that I really think would help everybody, and this is a little self-serving, but that is to learn about what your ship has to offer before you board. Regret is one of the most common pitfalls of any cruise, as people realize too late they missed out on an activity, tour, or cool thing they wanted to check out. If you want to ensure that you get to experience everything on your ship that appeals to you, then you're going to want to learn about your ship before you sail. Royal Caribbean certainly advertises the signature activities on its ships, but there's far more to do than just a flow rider or water slide. There are shows, trivia, lectures, entertainers, and lots of other really cool things you can do on board and on shore. So it's really to your advantage to learn about everything you can to ensure you don't miss out on any of it. Now, an easy way to learn about cruises is basically read a past cruise compass for the sailing you're going on. The cruise compass is a daily newspaper of activities, and Royal Caribbean doesn't change these plans much from sailing to sailing. So while a past cruise compass might not be a 100% representation of what you can expect, it's going to be close enough. Likewise, there may be a fun shore excursion you'd like to do, and it might be bookable through Royal Caribbean's website. The more you're aware of your choices, the less likely you'll be disappointed later and after learning that you could have done something else all entirely. Next up is to plan to hit the pool on embarkation day. Did you know that the pool and water slides are open on the first day of your cruise? Most people don't. Or more to the point, most people don't have their bathing suits with them to enjoy the pool on the first day because they pack them. Pack your bathing suits in your carry-on bag and then change once you get on board the ship to start off with a far less crowded pool deck day. You'll find practically empty pools and water slides without much of a wait at all well into the afternoon. Even when people get their luggage delivered to their cabin, by that point, it's time to get ready for dinner, and that keeps a lot of people from going to the pool altogether. Besides being less people to contend with, hopping in the pool or jacuzzi is just a great way to start your vacation with a more relaxed pace. Save the ship exploration for after dinner. Another way to improve your cruise is maybe bid for a cruise cabin upgrade. You don't need to spend more money to have a good time on a cruise, but it doesn't hurt either. Royal Up is Royal Caribbean Stateroom Upgrade Bidding Program, where you can attempt to make an offer for a bigger cabin. It's a blind bidding program, and that means you won't know what others bid, nor if they actually are any cabins available to upgrade to. But if you're lucky, you might be able to move up to a nicer cabin for less money than if you had booked it outright. People cancel cruises all the time, even with just days to go before their cruise. So Royal Up is a tool that the cruise lines use to fill in those canceled cabins. There's nothing wrong with dreaming big. So if you don't mind rolling the proverbial dice here on a cabin upgrade, give Royal Up a shot. Another really cool idea is to give two cabs instead of one for your family. So want to know the best cruise tip for a family? It's to get two cabins. If you're cruising with kids, it can be really advantageous to book two connecting or adjacent cabins instead of one large cabin for everybody to stay in. Connecting rooms provide separation so the kids can go to a bed at a different time from you. During the day, they have their own space and own television to watch. Most importantly, getting two rooms means you'll get two full bathrooms. Families with teenagers will find this an amazing benefit. It's also worth mentioning that two cabins doesn't mean expensive. Quite often, two smaller cabins can be the same price or cheaper even than one large room or certainly a suite. And my last way to improve your cruise is to use the porters at the end of the cruise. When it's time to get off the ship, do yourself and your back a favor and use the porters to get your luggage to your car. I see too many people lugging their bags out of the cruise terminal or even off the ship as a way to save a couple dollars. Porters have no cost to use, but you are expected to tip them a dollar or two per bag for their services. But in my opinion, it's so worth it to have the porter take your bags and lessen the load. In some ports, porters actually have their own line for getting through customs, and that can save you time as well. So there you have it. 10 ways to help improve your Royal Caribbean cruise. Again, I hope that hopefully all 10 of these will help you out. But even if you cherry pick a couple of them, my hope is that at least some of them will benefit you and it'll help you have a better overall enjoyable cruise. Not necessarily saving money, but at least making your cruise a more enjoyable experience. Let me know in the comments below if you wanted to share one tip with somebody on how to improve their cruise, no matter who they are. Let me know in the comments below what that tip would be. I can't wait to read them as well. And if you like this video, hit the thumbs up button. Make sure you subscribe to our channel and turn on notifications. That way YouTube lets you know we have a brand new video to share. This has been Matt from RollCreamBlog.com. We'll talk again real soon.